Have you ever struggled with blooming? Shining the light of God has asked you to shine. Not hiding it under a bush hill because ultimately that will be a sin. Have you ever struggled with the expansion of your personality and your mind outside of your normal? Where healing means that you look different. Where healing means that you start to look more like the image that God has created you to be. You are no longer broken. You no longer smell like smoke. Now you're living in an evolving world and you are challenged by the evolving causes immense fence to others. Jesus stood out as an example. He would often be leading a crowd, but would often not be afraid to go into the place of solitude. The truth is, as you start to heal, your identity changes. As you start to heal from emotional trauma, there is this requirement to be different. What you usually did, you don't have to do or do anymore. Where you usually went, you can no longer go. What you usually attracted, you now repel. The challenge of the separation process, or is it the beauty of the becoming, set apart. Where the remedial things of this world are no longer justified. You are now beyond the scope of occupying menial activities. God requires your full obedience. He loves you. Hey, welcome back to my channel. I am Kels and this is Her Rejected Truth. And on this platform, I encourage women to discover their identity and purpose through God's word. Here we talk about everything in the healing, deliverance, restoration, and many more. I like to say, I bring deep spiritual insights in the simplest form so that you can understand. So today, this video is for the girly old guy who is struggling to forgive. Um, you're a Christian and everywhere it tells you that you have to forgive or in your word, um, you have this conviction, people are telling you, um, or you have this just conviction in your heart, but you're really struggling too. This video isn't to dispute the fact that, yes, as believers, as believers we are called uh, to forgive others. I want to bring to you a sensitive video to consider and acknowledge the journey of forgiveness and how difficult it can be particularly for the people that have struggled with different things, aspects of abandonment, rejection, emotional trauma, abuse in childhood, and the intersections between that faith and the kind of requirements that we have to, or we believe we need to, or God has called us to um, do just as a believer. I can think of many scriptures that I've read throughout my lifetime that tells us about the importance of forgiveness. I have I can remember many a times the confliction or the internal turmoil that I have fe felt where I have felt offended or done something by um, someone and um, just how major it is for me uh, as a person, person and in my journey. So if anybody can understand, it is I. And I wanna bring to you uh, almost a dialogue a kind of video where we acknowledge the difficulty in that and hopefully can give you some insight and support you in your journey of forgiveness. I do have my phone, I'm using it just to enable me to stay on focus, stay on topic. I have a few things that I wanna mention in this video. Um, so if you do see me looking down, it's really because I'm just trying to get myself back on, um, back on focus. And so you may be someone that is not aware if you are struggling in uh, the area of unforgiveness. Sometimes it can look like different things. It can look like where you're a person who uh, may hold areas of resentment to people where they may not be aware of it. You may be a person who is struggling where your heart has become very actually numb um, to uh, people. You kind of, how I would describe it, will be on a defence where you just kind of live life and just gone throughout life, which I can relate where you just stay away from people. Um, you can adapt in environments, but you generally just keep away from environments just to minimize the impact of you being affected by people's actions and things. You may be someone that has grown in an element of bitterness where your heart has become very bitter 
or you're holding a lot of resentment to people that you love, okay? People that you've been brought up around, friends, family, and again, they may not be aware. Um, and you may be aware of these things, but you may be struggling to understand how do I navigate through this? Uh, you may be struggling with, okay, what do I do now? Okay, we're acknowledging the fact God has highlighted it to me. Um, people are praying about it for me, but I really don't know where to go next. And so keep watching. I definitely want you, if you would love to join the family, do subscribe, share this video with someone that you think it will be beneficial for. And then make sure you like, because when you like, it goes into the algorithm. It tells other people to come over here. And again, we get the gospel out there. We get people getting content that will help them in their journey. So I want to say to you that, you know, I want to highlight my personal journey with the, the whole unforgiveness thing. This is something that currently and recently, and I will say it's an ongoing thing. you will never arrived. I, I have not arrived. I think I am one that I would like to come from a peer on peer relatability perspective. I am someone that have gone through things in life where I would say I came from the lens where I was, um, again, shared my experiences, abandonment, rejection, and so I was naturally prone to being offended. I was someone that lived as offended. Um, and so, you know, you may not have intentionally tried to offend me or hurt me, but because I was a person that was naturally broken and hurt, any probably what would seem as harmless things that may happen, I was more likely to be offended. What I do know now is that as a as a child growing up, I feel that that was one way the enemy would always get me. When there is offence that comes in, into anyone's heart, you are likely to speak things, right? You may say, I'm never going to do this again, or I'm never going to let this person hurt me again, or I'm never going to come around people. And what effectively you're doing, you are doing soul ulcers, you're speaking things out, and you're kind of making agreement with the enemy to say, actually, because I have been hurt, because I am offended, I'm not going to do this. Now, that was one thing that I can relate to. As little as I can imagine, I remember naturally walking in the realm of a person where I wore rejection. So what I would do is, by estimation, I would assume that things that may be naturally quite harmful was either someone's intention to reject me or someone's intention to offend. Um, and my lens was from a broken lens. So naturally, anyone that's looking from a lens that is broken, you would always perceive something to be something that it's not. So you're really not alone. Okay, so if you can relate to some of the things that I've said, I think what what I realised then is as an adult, um, what, what I realised is, okay, this was me as a child, but as an adult and then now as a Christian or identifying as a Christian, that was always still there. Um, I think uh, what I would realise now is that unforgiveness was something that I wouldn't have said that I knew that I was someone that was harboring deep, deep seats of unforgiveness. I would have said that I was a person that was outside, out of mind. So if you've offended me, you may not even realise it, but the way I will manoeuvre around you would shift and change. I, I will person that would cut, 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 uh, blockity block. I wasn't really a blocker, actually. I was more of a person that would just, you know, cut off. Um, I was a person that would disassociate. I would attach myself, detach myself from situations. Um, and this was still as a Christian. The difficulty also is, is that why I think this video is really important, and I hope you're understanding, is that because in Christendom, you may not feel able to speak to anyone about the feeling of struggling to forgive when you'll naturally be met with the response that you need to. So... As someone that held deep seat pride, I would struggle to say to someone and come in all humility and say, actually, I feel convicted. I am struggling in this particular relationship. I'm struggling here to forgive or let go of something without being met with the scripture being given back to you or the saying, oh, you must forgive because Jesus forgiven you. God has forgiven you. Um, I think that that discussion has to happen because there are many people that are harboring things in your heart and you don't speak to people about it because you don't want to be judged number one. And you're struggling with the whole concept of kind of what kind of Christian would you be or what kind of woman or man um, would people perceive you to be if you're holding something against per a people. Now, there was a bracket of people which I fell under where I didn't realise that actually unforgiveness was something that was an idol, more deep-seated. I didn't realise how deep it went because one indication was that 
when something had happened, I would have to shift myself out of the situation. What would be a determinant that I hadn't forgiven someone is because I would often struggle to be in environments with the said same said people that I felt offended me or I felt um, done something towards me, which then as now an adult, I realised that I was still walking like that, um, even as a believer, even up until recently. I suppose one of the reasons that God wants me to really highlight this is that not only is it a sin of unforgiveness, which we know, but I think from the place of empathy, I think he wants to show that this is something that really separates a lot of people from him because our heart in a way is holding things against people. And yes, it's something that we are called to let go of, but it can be very hard. Like I said, often my offence was very unspoken, so you wouldn't really realise it sometimes. Or um, I will be a person that, you know, kind of it was just in the heart. I will be that person where it says that saying where you would drink poison and wait for the other person to die. Um, I realised, I mentioned in my video last week, if you haven't caught up with it, that I, even at work I could be very hot. Um, things can happen. And I realised that because it's very spiritual, and I'm going to talk about the spiritual dimensions of things, that the enemy will really use and set up situations, particularly situations that there will be offence caused or I would feel a way about something. And then it will lead me to a place that I became very stuck and unable to move out of. So then I will have something in my heart, attempt to try this dysfunction or this toxic cycle of kind of having this... Um, perception of harmony with the person or the environment or the people pretending that we're cool but in my heart we really wasn't right and that perception on the outside became very important to me because I would rather it be that people see that we're cool but I know we're not cool in my heart right up until recently the Lord challenged me on that whole concept that really it's the opposite, opposite thing you should be considering. It's what I see in your heart rather than what you think people are seeing. So it's really important for you to understand what is the root cause of your unforgiveness, okay? And I want to really say that because when you understand root causes of things, it will help you to know how to identify, acknowledge and tackle it. So as I mentioned, there could be, like me, the root cause could be rejection, abandonment, um, abuse, trauma, right? And so the root causation, and it could be experiences of things in your bloodline, in your generation. You could just be born into a situation where, again, trigger warning, you may have not been wanted in your um, in childhood or it could cause you to have this overarching wearing of rejection, right? And so it could be a situation where the primary carer, where you have expectations of your primary carers, where you are expecting things as a child to be nurtured, taken care of, and that you've been let down in that estimation. And then as an adult, where there is that area is not healed, you are growing into new relationships and forming new friendships, and then you've got this unrealistic expectations on these friendships, or you have a complex where there is a codependency issue, where there is a trauma bonding and you expect this person to save you or the person is coming in as a savior and when they don't meet the mark the offense is already there right and then you carry this cycle where you don't re meet the mark or they don't meet the mark and you um assume that you trying to not cause offense keep on the relationship um you have hidden offense in your heart um and then you have this big big blow up where you, they're like you know you're like you've never been there for me and they're like whoa we're always together and then you're offended because the world response almost makes you feel like you are not seen not heard let me tell you emotional trauma will do that to you i know it so well but from a spiritual perspective is it also important to consider that sometimes we don't realize that yes we are called to do things and yes there are things in the way such as the most obvious things but there could be a spiritual dimension to it that you have not even considered so for example i now realize that i often used to have dreams and there was dreams that were real soulish dreams that i would see myself i am in myself and i'm saying to this person you hurt me or i would see the people that seemingly i had offense against or feelings in my dream and there was a current thing where i was telling them how much they have hurt me or how much they and I didn't realise that this was 
almost the spiritual dimensions of the re-establishing of this hurt and my heart being away where because I didn't realize it I didn't do anything about it what I mean is that now considering if I had a dream like that where I was saying to someone I will reject it rebuke it and be like no I've forgiven this person this happened 10 years ago why am I having a dream now about something that happened 10 years ago why are we talking about why am I seeing myself talking to a person say you hurt me you did this to me that's that's old but I didn't realize that the enemy was using that as a place and a point of reference to reform things in my heart that happened so long ago and bring me back into the place that I was stuck in the sea or the area of unforgiveness so what what do you do when someone has offended you or you feel that you've been hurt by someone what how do you respond you know I often reference Joseph in my video I often think about Joseph in the bible my story if I say that I can really identify with I can identify with Joseph if you don't know the story you know Joseph the brothers you know Joseph of the the the, the you know had the coat of many colors he was he was one of 12 he was one of the youngest um was he one of the youngest anyway he was one of 12 boys Joseph, you know the story, uh, hated by his brothers, they were jealous, he was one of his dad's, he was his dad's favourite, and so, you know, being left in a pit, um, left for death, they, they conspired how to get rid of him, and when you think about it, you will think this boy, this man has every right to really hold something against people that had an intention to kill him not just people these were his blood relatives right these were people um and when i'm thinking about joseph i'm thinking about you know yeah he had he had from from a standard what i will think around is every right to feel away about what had happened to him or if you're thinking about saul and thinking about saul um and david David sorry think about David um in first Sam in Samuel in the book of Samuel if you read the story of Saul and David you will see that Saul had the intention due to jealousy to really get rid of David but but you know in every in everything you will think that there was a justification um sometimes there was a feeling that you know I needed vindication for the offense I needed vindication and therefore holding unforgiveness was a form of deep uh, manipulation sometimes where I felt actually I'm not going to afford you forgiveness because you haven't responded the way I desire to respond and therefore sometimes we can hold ourselves in a place where we feel that we need to be vindicated or assumed right because we have been offended okay sometimes we believe that there is a justification for the offense and in society when we think about the world's offense when when we think about the world's perspective on this we would often see that there may be this ideology or this concept that yes if someone hurts you cut them off yes you know if your man cheats on you this husband this this is how you're going to respond you realize that if you're digesting this kind of kind of content and material that is the world's perspective and we living in this world can really take that on right so watching podcasts that really speak about you know red pill blue pill what is the perceptions of women and male relationships how what is a normal unusual response it may be the opposite to actually what we're reading in the world or what we're seeing in terms of our case study of joseph and david's res response I'll give you the example going back to joseph if you want to think about the what would have been the world's response they will say you know it, you know your brothers did this to you this is how you're supposed to respond never see them again forget about them don't forgive them but what we saw was the opposite we saw joseph now in a place of leadership in egypt he now because of the seven year famine he's now in a place where he has power and authority where the brothers are now traveling to come and get some resources because they're in a seven year famine there's nothing and they've been sent to this land to to so now the ball has changed right but what we saw was the the difficulty the emotional difficulty that even though joseph has seen his brothers he's still struggling i'm sure feelings were coming up i'm sure things but he was really concerned about his younger brother he wanted to see his younger brother he was concerned is his dad still alive he um didn't give them what what, what the world would say they des they deserved 
he didn't do that, right? It was quite the opposite. He was someone that arranged for them to get resources and so that they, you know, food. And that would, today's standard, we may say, okay, that's crazy because you were left, right? You were been left by your brothers in the um, pit. And so um, David, David and Saul, David had many instances where he had an opportunity to kill Saul, many instances. I remember instances where David is actually very close to Saul and he could end him. And his friends are even say, done him, like finish him, end him now. Uh, or would we say the people around David was like, end him now. But David would, you would see, he didn't do what seemingly we would say the world standard. Someone's trying to kill you, kill them. Someone is trying to murder you with their time, gossiping about you. Why don't you murder them back and gossip about them? David would say to Saul um, that actually what you deserve, I haven't given it to you. Or seemingly you want to kill me, but you know, I'm not doing that to you. And I think it's just an image of where we think someone is justified and could say, I am justified to maybe murder you back, gossip about you, do this back to you, but I am actually not going to, okay? From that perspective, that encouraged me because my prayer was often, God, this is the perspective that is your perspective. The world has this perspective, but I'm hurting right now. I am confused right now, but give me your perspective. A prayer could be, God, in this situation, I know you are convicting me about this thing I'm holding, but Lord, I really, I really don't want to um, move from this. I'm being reminded, and I shared it recently, that, or have I shared it? That even up until recently, where what I had now practically come into challenge was, was that, I was God was giving me the heads up in dreams that people were going to start coming around again people that I haven't seen for years but the difficulty was that I was struggling even till today which was saying to me have I have, have I actually forgiven and actually I think about Joseph it was a situation where family friends maybe you would deem as family now coming around and my gut reaction was, I don't want to see them. And then God was showing me that I actually hadn't forgiven. Although time, space has passed, I was still holding something which was affecting my ability to want to reconcile. Because also there was a complexity that I thought, actually, well, well, am I going to see them ever again? But God had the perspective. He had the bigger picture. And so my prayer became, okay, God, you have the picture. If it's your desire, help me, my feelings to align up with your perspective because your girl doesn't want to right now. But help me to, yeah, help me to line up with what you desire. And so as I started to pray along those lines, I really want to understand that because I was looking from a broken lens, my responses was always going to be broken, broken cows, rather than as I started to walk in this journey of healing, I realized that my perspective and lens was changing where, where I assumed I was always the victim, it was becoming apparent that this was an idol and that I really had to be very intentional about being very conscious about this issue of unforgiveness. Because the lens of brokenness was calling me, causing me to assume role of victimhood. But then now I had to take this responsibility and see that, yes, you assume you have been hurt, but you're also hurting others. Your behaviour is something that you need to consider because often the rejected feeling of a rejected person would always try to reject first. And so as I start to pray and really be considerate that this was something that I had to pay attention to, because in terms of separating myself from God, this was a primary thing that God was trying to show me that is an issue. I had to then realise that possibly because of my root cause of where this is stemming from, it is causing me to assume role as victim and not take responsibility of healing. 
So the pain was coming from a place where then then you can potentially fall into idolism. You can potentially fall into a place where you say, OK, God, not only am I holding this and I'm playing it off as if, OK, I'm not going to see them again. But then it in the whole faith that God is able to vindicate and God is control. When we try and control the situation and kind of desire the outcome to be we are effectively falling into areas of manipulation okay um and ladies it's something that's very 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 dangerous and also it could make you feel like you you no longer desire god to be you know the vindicator but you desire to take control of what you feel the story and the outcome should be, which which for me, I can relate to on so many levels. One of the tactics of the enemy that you need to consider, um, not only have I mentioned it before about dreams, but one thing that I realise, as long as you're in this body, as long as, and the word of God says is, offences will come. As God calls you, and some of you are watching, you're a highly anointed, God is calling you into spaces, but you have to heal. Because one element is that as long as we are ministering and we're calling the place of ministry to engage with people, you know, for real, you will be offended, you would struggle. But if you particularly struggle with unforgiveness, one of the things that you need to really realise is that the tactic of the enemy is to try and keep you in a place where you cannot pray for other people, you can't pursue relationships because you remain in the place of unforgiveness. Something that used to always happen to me is not only that I would have dreams, like I mentioned before, but I was having place uh, thoughts. I would find myself in situations where I'm just sitting and I'm ruminating over a situation that happened 10 years ago, five years ago. I used to do this all the time. I could sit and go in my imagination and think about a situation which made me so angry. But then I'm like, now, 10 years later, why is this coming back to my own? If I didn't realise what the tactic was, I would stay in this cycle, right? Once I realised this is the enemy's trying to ensure that I come back into agreement with that offence, I had to say, no, 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 no. Capture that thought. I reject you in the mighty name of Jesus. Send it back. I say, God, I cancel myself. I've forgiven. I cancel. I detach myself from anything that is trying to reestablish any sort of offence and unforgiveness. I, let me be real with you. It doesn't always happen like that. OK, but one thing that I'm going to say to you is that when you are very intentionally aware of the tactics of hell, you would understand, OK, this is my trigger and this is therefore what I need to consider where I bring this to the feet of Jesus every day. I am, I am infallible every day. God, there will be an offence. And I know if I'm someone that is naturally inclined to being offended, Lord, you know, your girl's going to come to you. Your girl is going to come to you every day. I'm going to bring it to you every day, every day. So what do you do? Like what has helped me? What, let me share with you some of the things I mentioned just now triggers. Knowing your trigger is so important. You know, the sin of unforgiveness, unfortunately, is taking many people to hell. And this is why I'm doing this video, because like not on my watch, nobody that's part of the High Rejected Truth a crew, family is going to be almost deceived to the perspective that you think that you can be a believer and be holding on to things in your heart. As long as you're able to send them, God bless you, sis. You'll be seeing them in church. God bless you, sis. Looking at the back of their head, side eyeing them, speaking things in your heart. And you're saying, listen, you think that <laughs> will suffice? We are deceived to be honest so knowing your triggers number two remembering what jesus has done for you and okay so let me say this to you you know i would hear people say this to me remember what jesus has done for you you know you have to forgive but when i went in this journey of really drawing close to the lord there was something about the beauty of understanding my god grace grace lord you this dirt you know infallible messed up me person who has messed up every day every second and you still love me like who am i to hold this against you and don't get me wrong this is something that is like it's a daily thing right it happens every day and i have to be very intentional because i know that i'm more likely to be triggered 
because I've come from a place of rejection and abandonment. Yes, God has healed me, but I'm very aware of my triggers. And that's the other thing to, to, to really say is just to be aware, be intentional, write down things, note your body language, note how things are said. Um, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal God I feel that this has been said in this way however I know my lens can be a bit distorted because of where I've got God help me to see it from your perspective help me to see the overarching thing help me to see what you are doing um, and I'll just say you know forgive yourself I remember you know just this whole journey of um, brokenness remember when you're broken you see from broken lenses i remember my coach asked me to do a letter and it was really to just write down offering of myself forgiveness so write down a letter to myself just just offer forgiveness to myself and what i was saying is basically you know life has been life in you know it hasn't been the greatest you know i haven't necessarily been navigating through how do you deal with certain situations and relationships what i hadn't known to do is to do what i do to survive which was to navigate through severing relationships maybe prematurely and so the the offender the offendee assumed offendee was an offender and i've offended many a people and so therefore forgive yourself if that if that's something you can relate to where you're struggling to forgive yourself because you feel that you have done things to other people release forgiveness to yourself even today one thing i know is that the fourth thing is to remember that you are not doing this alone the holy spirit is with you if you don't know, you're watching this video and you're saying, you know, Kels, my relationship with God isn't, you know, what I would say is upstanding. Start with saying, God, at this time, I am asking you to be Lord of my life. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to reside within me and help me in this journey of forgiveness. Be intentional to identify scriptures. One thing I try to do is get scriptures that aligns with the struggles that you're going through right now. Is it a struggle of offence? A struggle of forgiveness? Go on Google, search scriptures on unforgiveness. Pray it daily. Be ferocious. Be, be intentional. Fast. Say, God, I'm going to set down my plate for two hours, for the morning, for the afternoon, morning and afternoon, for a day. However the standard of whatever God leads you to, just say, God, I want this flesh to go asunder. God, I want you to heal me from the errors, from the things that are causing me to be so much more likely to be offended. So much likely to hold on to unforgiveness. God, where this sin has beset me and is stopping me. Let me just say this also, that the sin of unforgiveness is one that God showed me. If I do not get through this season of what he's doing, when I'm requiring and I'm asking and praying for things, there's something he's not hearing. There are things that also, because I could not really navigate, navigate through some things, I'm praying for blessings and I knew if I do not release this situation, people, I am not going to be free. I'm going to continuously be burdened. I'm going to continuously feel under um, this kind of shame and guilt. And so, although it was, it's the most hardest thing to do to confront yourself, release it through the Holy Spirit. Say, God, help me. Um, the Joseph Solomon book, um, uh, have some... I'm going to put the link at the bottom. It has some good prayers. Sometimes we may struggle to know what kind of prayers we can pray. And so when you have a guided prayer, it helps you to now think about things that you um, may struggle to really identify and know. And so, for example, you may just say, you know what, let me capture this in one of the books. Let me get this book. Let me see. This is another book, 215. Let me just quickly see what it says unforgiveness hmm oh it talks about bitterness 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 can enter parents through foolish children a person can have the goal of bitterness which leads to witchcraft and sorcery acts 8 23 oh we don't like that we're not trying to be like that so a root that cannot be seen hidden from the view. Ooh. And you remember what I said about earlier that can cause physical ailments. It says here, some of the fruits of bitterness can be seen through sickness, cancer, arthritis. We don't want that. And sis, I don't want that for you. Nobody on my um watching this channel. This is another book that I have and I and I like. It's called it's John John Eckhart's book, Deliverance from Spiritual Warfare. 
So I want to say, if you feel like this video, you know, tell me what the journey is looking like for you. Share with me in the comments, what is the forgiveness journey looking like? How have you been getting through? What has God been showing you? Share because other people would love to see your comments. How has it been? Is it far harder for people that you don't know or you just met to your family? Is it a lot deeper? Um, and yeah, share this video, like, share, subscribe as per usual. I'll be back. Come and say hello to me in the Instagram, in the DMs. Um, I have a subscription list if you would like to join to hit, get updates on the ministry, what we're getting up to. I have an email also, so we can shout out in the email in the description box. I'll be back next week for another video. I want to say thank you for coming to, up to the end of this video. I again want to say, you know, you know, Jesus, um, yeah. He's the, he's the primary source um, in this healing journey um, and catalyst for it. So yeah, accept him. And I'll see you next week. Bye.